There are seven things that make a good VPN, and in this video, I'm gonna be evaluating the most popular VPNs to see how they stack up in each of these categories. Jumping in, I wanna start with pricing as this is one of the most important aspects when shopping for a VPN. I'll have links to all the VPNs in the description below because some of them will offer you a discount or extra months for free. The best bang for your buck is gonna be Surfshark where you can get a 27 month account for $60, which breaks down to about $2.21 a month. I'm gonna be highlighting each VPN's one to two year account because for whatever reason, the entire VPN industry just wants you to subscribe for one to two years. And if you try to subscribe monthly, you're gonna be paying way more per month than you should. Surfshark is a fast VPN, it's great for streaming, and I'll talk more about it later, but it really is a great value. Private Internet Access technically offers the lowest pricing of any VPN in this video. You can get a 39 month account for $80, which breaks down to just over $2 per month. NordVPN falls somewhere in the middle at about $60 for a one year account. It's not the cheapest VPN, but it does have some advantages. By far, the most expensive VPNs are ExpressVPN, and ProtonVPN. ExpressVPN is charging $100 for a 15 month account, so it needs to have some impressive speed and features to be worth the cost. If you're looking for a month to month VPN, Molvad takes a very different approach. It's just five euros per month for unlimited access. They don't offer any annual or two year discounts. It's five euros per month, pay as you go. And there's a lot of things about Mulvad that make it unique, but more on that later. So next, taking a look at speed, ExpressVPN and Surfshark both offered impressive performance. I saw download speeds as high as 795 megabits per second on Surfshark on my gigabit fiber connection. ExpressVPN was close and they topped out at about 734 megabits per second on the download. However, ExpressVPN consistently had higher upload speeds. NordVPN also performed well, offering download speeds in the 500 megabits per second range and upload speeds around 200 megabits per second. PIA, ProtonVPN, and Mulvad all struggled with speed. All three of them sometimes gave me double digit numbers like 17 megabits per second, 64 megabits per second, even 15 megabits per second download speeds. Next, let's look at streaming. Streaming functionality is an important feature of any VPN because it's a big reason many people get a VPN. If you're looking to access region locked content in other countries, a VPN is how you do that. So you're gonna wanna make sure that a VPN plays fair with streaming services and the IPs aren't blocked. I had great results with Surfshark, ExpressVPN, NordVPN, and ProtonVPN. All of these VPNs work perfectly on Netflix, Disney Plus, and Hulu, and I was able to to access region locked content when connected to servers in the UK and Canada. So I definitely wouldn't recommend PIA for streaming. While they do claim to support it on their website, I had a lot of issues accessing Disney Plus and Hulu. And while I was able to access Netflix, for some reason it didn't load any region locked content in the other countries that I would connect to. So that's definitely out of the picture if streaming is important. Mulvad VPN also didn't work for Disney Plus or Hulu, but Mulvad does not make any claims that their VPN is optimized for streaming. So definitely not a good pick if that's important to you. All these VPNs offer a great variety of server locations, but some VPNs stand out for having server locations that other VPNs don't. Every VPN except Mulvad offers locations in India via virtual IP addresses. Since India announced a regulation that all VPNs stored in the country must log data, the industry has pivoted and found nearby servers with Indian IP addresses, so you're still able to have a similar browsing experience. Private internet access is the only VPN in this video to offer server locations in China. PIA is also the only VPN I tested to offer servers in each of the 50 US states. This could be useful if you want your browsing activity to appear from your home state, or if you just want a VPN server to be located as close to you as possible. ProtonVPN is the only VPN I tested offering servers in Russia. And other than that, every VPN in this video offers a variety of server locations in common places like the US, the UK, Japan, and Switzerland. Finding the right server location greatly affects your VPN experience. 
But another thing that affects your online security is the strength of your passwords. You know, the best way to protect yourself online is to secure your accounts with strong, unique passwords. But no one can remember hundreds of different passwords, and that's where 1Password, the sponsor of today's video, can help. 1Password is a password manager that stores your logins, credit cards, personal information, and secure notes. You can use Autofill to easily log in with your websites, and you can conveniently access your vault using Face ID, Windows Hello, or Fingerprint Unlock. 1Password even lets you share passwords with family or colleagues. We use 1Password here at Krayler Media, and it's super easy for me to share specific passwords with team members so they have exactly what they need to get their job done. 1Password is offering 25% off for new users, so check out this link to get started. Thanks to 1Password for sponsoring today's video, and now let's take a look at the mobile apps for each of the VPNs. The desktop apps are all decent and pretty straightforward, and the mobile apps are too. One thing I look for in a VPN's mobile app is the ability to turn on auto connect, so that way when I leave the house, I don't have to think about it, my phone just connects to the VPN, and when I'm back home connected to a trusted network, it disconnects from the VPN. NordVPN, Surfshark, and PIA all do this well. ExpressVPN does offer an auto connect feature in the Android app, but for whatever reason, it's not present in the iOS app. ProtonVPN and Mulvad don't offer any sort of auto-connect on mobile. Private Internet Access has the most advanced version of this feature, allowing you to create specific rules on when it will automatically connect to a VPN, like only connecting to a VPN on specific Wi-Fi networks, or only connecting on cellular or open Wi-Fi networks. If you're going for simplicity, ExpressVPN and Mulvad both have easy-to-use apps. This is largely because they don't have many settings for you to mess with, so you pretty much open the app, connect to the VPN, and go about your day. This is great if that's what you like, but if you want auto-connect in some of the other settings, you're gonna wanna pick a different VPN. Now let's talk privacy. This is arguably the most important aspect of choosing a VPN, because one of the main use cases of a VPN is to protect your browsing data and make sure that there's no logs of it so nobody could ever see what you're doing. All of these VPNs have no logs policies, but there's also other considerations like where a VPN company is based and what the company's reputation and history is for protecting user data. ExpressVPN and Private Internet Access are both owned by CAPE, a security company that owns quite a few VPNs and antivirus softwares. In past content, I've talked about how I'm not the biggest fan of CAPE, but I can say that ExpressVPN has really stepped up the amount of third-party audits they're doing, and the $100,000 bounty program does show that CAPE cares about security and they wanna make sure that their VPNs are as strong as possible. I think CAPE is starting to show that they care about privacy and security with the decisions they're making. The original co-founders and senior leadership from when they were Crossrider left the company when they rebranded to CAPE, and they might as well be a totally different company. But I'm still cautious about VPNs that are owned by a big company, and I would still prefer VPNs that are independently owned and operated. But speaking of big companies, Nord Security is the parent company of NordVPN, and they recently merged with Surfshark. NordVPN is based in Panama and has suffered a security incident back in 2018. I've talked about this before on my channel, so I'm not gonna cover it again, but there's been no notable security incidents since. Now I wanna take a look at Mulvad's privacy, and this is the most unique VPN I've ever seen from a privacy perspective. That's because Mulvad does not collect any email addresses, passwords, usernames, anything that could be tied back to the user. Instead, Mulvad generates a random account number, and that account number is the only thing you need to use the VPN. You're able to pay for your account with crypto, so it's possible to remain completely anonymous and have no way that Mulvad could ever tie data back to a specific user. Mulvad is based in Sweden, and honestly, if privacy is your number one concern with a VPN, I think Mulvad is hands down the best choice. Last, we have Proton VPN. Based in Switzerland, Proton VPN is known for its strong commitment to privacy thanks to its forever free VPN. Unfortunately, Proton VPN 
sister company Proton Mail experienced a security incident where they shared a user IP address with French authorities. Now, Proton's CEO said that they were just complying with law enforcement's requests, and while any VPN company should respond to law enforcement requests, the idea here is that they don't have a log or any record of a user IP address or browsing data. So why did Proton Mail magically have that user's IP address when they said they weren't logging it? Because of this, I remain skeptical of Proton VPN's privacy. You can say you have a no logs policy all day long, but if law enforcement gives you a request for data, are you just magically gonna come up with data that you claim you're not logging? I am a little bit sketched out. So in order to evaluate which VPN is truly right for you, we need to know what sets each VPN apart. Every VPN has a different set of unique features like built-in ad blockers, dark web monitoring, and even password managers. For example, Surfshark is a VPN with quite a few extra features. They have a built-in ad blocker, tracker blocker, and malware blocker. And if you're gonna be subscribing to the two-year plan, you can get Surfshark 1 included, which has extra features like dark web monitoring, a search engine by Surfshark, which is kind of interesting. They say it's more private than incognito, mode, and you get access to Surfshark Antivirus. Surfshark 1 is also available as a separate plan if you choose to subscribe to the VPN for one year or monthly. Similarly, NordVPN offers a built-in ad blocker and tracker blocker, and they recently announced a new feature they call MeshNet. This allows you to route browsing traffic through your other devices. So you could have your phone on the go and route your browsing traffic through your home IP address via your desktop. You can also use MeshNet to host virtual LAN parties with multiplayer games or access files remotely from your home computer when you're on the go. NordVPN also offers bundle plans with Nord Security's other products like NordPass and NordLocker. If you're looking for a VPN with a lot of advanced settings, private internet access is for you. They have a built-in ad blocker and tracker blocker known as PIA Mace, but unfortunately, Mace is not available on the mobile apps. On iOS, they do have a Safari content blocker, but this is only gonna block ads when you're browsing in Safari. Other features you'll find in PIA include the advanced automation with auto-connect rules, split tunneling capability, and multi-hop. PIA is also the only VPN I tested to offer dedicated IPs as a paid add-on. ProtonVPN and Mulvad do offer built-in ad blockers and tracker blockers, and ExpressVPN does have a threat manager, but this is only a tracker blocker and malware blocker. It doesn't have any ad blocking capability. ExpressVPN is in the process of launching ExpressVPN Keys, which is their new password manager they're going to include with every ExpressVPN subscription. But unfortunately, Keys has not rolled out to me yet, so I wasn't able to test it, and I don't know if it's really worth using. My recommendation for the best budget VPN is going to be Surfshark. It's priced very competitively at $60 for a 27 month account, and you're not gonna find a faster, more capable VPN at that price point. If you're looking for a privacy first VPN, definitely go with Mulvad. There's no doubt that they have a unique, radical take on how they handle user data with not requiring personal information. And I think Mulvad is also unique thanks to their month to month pricing models. So Mulvad could also be a good budget VPN if you're not ready to commit to a one to two year account. And if you're looking for an advanced VPN with things like a dedicated IP address and split tunneling, private internet access is a great choice. I was really impressed with the automation rules they offer and all the different things you can do and the fact that they offer a server in each of the 50 US states. I really like what PIA is doing and if you're an enthusiast and you're looking for a lot of different things you can configure, PIA is a great choice. And that leads me to the best overall VPN, my personal favorite VPN and the one that I'm recommending in this year's comparison and that is Surfshark. Yes, that's right. The best budget VPN is actually the best overall VPN this year. 
I didn't expect that because last year I was a fan of NordVPN, but looking at the data, there's no denying that Surfshark has stepped their game up. It's blazing fast, it works great with streaming, it has all the same auto connect features, the built in ad blocker, tracker blocker. Surfshark really is a great value, but it's not just a great value, it's great functionally. I do wanna say that if you watch my past comparisons and you bought a multi-year subscription to NordVPN, that's still a fantastic option. I don't want this to come across as me bailing on NordVPN after a year and implying that it's a bad VPN. It's still very competitive, it's a great choice, but I think that Surfshark is offering a better value. And each year I wanna give you my honest opinion on who I feel is the best VPN that year. And I find that quite a bit changes with these VPNs from year to year. I don't think you can go wrong with any of the VPNs in this video, though I will say, I just don't think Proton VPN is worth the price and the functionality overall is pretty poor. And ExpressVPN is a bit on the expensive side, but seriously, all the VPNs mentioned in this video do a great job at protecting your privacy. Another great way to protect your privacy is by using strong, unique passwords for each login. So don't forget to check out 1Password and get 25% off at this link. And if you wanna know what the best password manager is for you, I have a whole comparison video on that you can check out here.